everybody. Happy Tuesday. Hope everybody is uh, having a great week so far. All righty, I'm just going to jump right into this because I don't want to make this a super long video. Um, this is something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while now. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shara Prophet. I am a behavior modification specialist, and I'm certified in clinical hypnotherapy. I am a writer. I am a teacher, a speaker, and mystic. <clears throat> and so today we're going to talk about the problem with ethically non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships in today's society. Now, first of all, let me say this. I understand that there are people out there who naturally um, desire or have a, a tendency to want to explore more than one energy, meaning they want to be with more than one person. So depending on people's astrological charts and you know their upbringing, there are people out there who naturally gravitate toward this night this lifestyle so this message is not for anyone who naturally gravitates towards that lifestyle okay that's your lifestyle choice it is in your nature and that's who you are so congratulations to you for living in your truth this message is for anyone who is choosing this lifestyle out of necessity or out of fear Okay. Now I have been hearing a lot of women um, choosing this particular lifestyle right now. And that's not a problem. I have a problem with it because I know what their true desire is. I know what their true core desire is. And it is not to share a man or to have to go and be with other men when the one man that they truly want is not available, okay? So what's happening is a lot of people are opting for this lifestyle simply because they have tried to have monogamous relationships in the past and they haven't worked out. And in their minds, they're thinking, well, you know, men cheat and women cheat. So I may as well be in the know and know what I'm getting myself into rather than thinking I'm in a monogamous relationship and this person could possibly be lying to me or betraying me without my knowledge. So instead, I'm going to so I'm going to opt to be in a situation where a person is is more open and transparent about the situation. And again, this is fine. If you are naturally okay with this, if this is your lifestyle, Okay, it's fine. However, when you are, it becomes a problem when you're going against your own code. Okay, your code is your truest heart's desire. Your code is what your soul is calling you to do. And it's the difference between what your ego is calling you to do out of fear versus what your soul is calling you to do, which may require you to stand 10 toes down in what you truly desire and what you truly want. That's how you get what you want. When you stand 10 toes down in what it is that you truly desire and you are unmoved by what the rest of the world is telling you. I, I was on a date with a guy a few months ago and, um, you know, we were just talking about dating and things like that. And I was just telling him how I don't really subscribe to a lot of these uh, dating, this dating advice that's out here, you know, that I go off of what my own higher intelligence is telling me to do when it comes to dating and selecting a person and who I choose to spend my time and my energy with, okay? And he was like, well, I think you probably should because nowadays, you know, uh, it's basically easier for a man to be, to get into a relationship than a woman. <clears throat> and what he was saying made sense in the mundane world and in, in, the, in the human world, right? From a human perspective, from 
someone who pays more attention to what the outside world is telling them about how to live their lives versus someone who taps in intuitively. So needless to say, me and this guy don't talk anymore, but because he's more tapped into what the outside world has to say about love and romance and how you should date and things like that, rather than just tapping in to what the higher, his own higher intelligence is telling him to do. Okay. There was a lot of other things that I noticed about this person, which is why I was just like, I'm good on that, but good, great person, great guy. However, just issues, unresolved issues. Okay. And so I told him, I said, you know, I noticed that a lot of people are listening to what other people are telling them about what they should be looking for and what they should expect in the dating world instead of going within and doing the inner work to say, hmm, why am I attracting these types of people? Why am I having a difficult time attracting what I want and having the type of experience that I want in romantic partnership? Instead, they're saying, oh, everyone cheats, so I might as well go ahead and opt for this lifestyle that deep down is not going to make me happy, is not going to satisfy me, okay? I'm always going to be having to go outside and look for new connections because these connections aren't really satisfying me because they're scattered energies. The energy is everywhere, and I am seeking more focused energy, okay? But because I am not able to attract someone who has more focused energy when it comes to romantic partnership, I'm gonna opt for this other lifestyle. Even though it does not resonate with me, it, I am not in alignment fully with it. And until you can get an alignment fully with it, you're going to be miserable. That's really what it comes down to. You're going to be miserable no matter how much you try to lie to yourself and you try to make a square peg fit into a round hole. If it does not resonate with the core root of who you are, you're going to continue to walk into more heartache. You're going to continue to experience more heartache. So if you're going to opt for any lifestyle, any job, anything, you need to make sure that you are 100% fully into it. Like it's something that really ignites you. It's something that excites you. It's something that you're passionate about. Because if you're not, guess what? Eventually it's going to fall apart and you're going to find yourself right back at square, at square one. So you may as well get down and dirty with yourself and make sure you are fully aware of all of the things and the reasons why your relationships haven't been successful in the past. Start working on those issues internally. The more we heal, the more our magnet, our inner magnet becomes purified and we start to attract the things that we truly desire the experiences, the jobs, the money, the opportunities, the clients, the business partners, the lovers, the friendships, okay? That's how you start to really start living a life that is joy-filled, that is abundant, that is overflowing with passion and drive, and you're in alignment with it. You're living a truly authentic life. Keep listening to the outside world if you want to. Keep paying attention to people who place more value on what you look like and how to protect yourself from getting your heart broken. Pay attention to that because a lot of this, this dating advice is fear-based and it is trying to get you to avoid getting your heart broken. And the best way for you to not even avoid it, but to better navigate through disappointments and when things aren't quite working out for you is for you to start working on your inner child. Work on your inner child issues, work on your codependency issues, okay? And don't be afraid to stand 10 toes down in what is really for you. You need to ask those questions. What do I really want? 
I heard someone say, I really do want one main person, but I also want to be prepared for if that person is not available to fully be with me, I, I would like to be able to go to another person so that I can get what I need. So basically, you're afraid to be alone. That's basically what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that you're scared to be by yourself. That if you really like someone and they don't have time for you, the little kid inside of you, the codependent child within, needs to have something else to go to to self-soothe. That is what's happening. Okay? It is time for us to ask ourselves the real right questions and to be open to those honest truths when they come those answers when they come. And it's time for us to get real with ourselves because I hear so much nonsense in the internet world. I hear so much nonsense in just people's conversation and it's not a judgment. It's just, you're so consumed with self-soothing. You're so consumed with, I'm, I need to protect myself because I always get hurt. So let me make sure that I don't get hurt by making sure I have four or five options over here because if I only focus on this one person that I really really like that I would love to spend all my time with and they're not available or they have options then I'm going to feel left out I'm going to feel hurt and rejected okay that's what's really going on and that's the issue that needs to be looked at that is the thing that needs to that is calling for us to pay attention to it okay that's the 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 healing the work that needs to be done and why do i know this is because i used to be that person i used to be that person that needed to have four or five options in case he wasn't available then i could call him and so on and so on and so on Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, codependency issues, classic. And once I started doing that inner work within me, I was able to ask myself the right question and say, okay, Sharon, what do you really want? I want to be in a relationship with a divine masculine counterpart who only desires me and I only desire him. That is possible. I see evidence of that in my life with, with friends and family members who are in loving, healthy relationships, okay? And I always say this, if I can have healthy, loving, reciprocal friendships, right? That's a relationship as well. The only difference is that I'm not having a, a, a sexual relationship with them. But a relationship is a relationship is a relationship across the board. So if my relationships are healthy and reciprocal, and I can have open, transparent conversations with these people, and we can meet eye to eye, and we can either agree to disagree, or we can agree or whatever, right? Then why can't that happen in a romantic partnership with one person? Why can't that happen? It can, and it will because I will not accept anything less. We are so used to accepting less that we're willing to fall for anything. You don't stand for it. You stand for nothing, therefore you fall for anything. Again, this message is not for the person who is living their authentic life, who truly desires to be in an ethically non-monogamous relationship, who truly, desire, truly desires to have an open relationship. This is not for you. This is for someone who desires the opposite, but is opting for something that does not align with them, that doesn't fit for them. Fitting a square peg into a round hole because they are afraid of being rejected or disappointed or abandoned. Fix the magnet, fix the inside of you so you can stand for exactly what you want. And don't put, and stop putting time frames and time periods around things. That's the other thing. People are running after whatever because they feel like they got to have it now. 
Why do you feel like you have to have it now? Instant gratification. Instant gratification is self-soothing. I have to self-soothe because if I can't get my fix, my instant gratification, I'm going to die and I'm scared of death. That's the true fear. True fear is the fear of death. Okay? Death happens in many different forms. It doesn't have to mean that you're fearful of being uh, taken out of your physical body. It just means I am fearful of change. I'm a, I am afraid that my little tiny baby self is not going to have my needs met. And I'm already afraid of that. So I want to make sure that my needs are met. If my needs, needs don't get met, that means that I'm going to have to shift and change and pivot. And that's a death. That's a death. A shift, a change, a pivot. That's a death of being in one state of being and transferring it into a different state of being because now I have to shift my entire world, my entire expectation. Everything has to shift now because I can't have what I want. But what I want is a direct reflection of the very thing that needs to be healed within me. Okay? What I want is what I've always gravitated towards my entire life. And it's never really been beneficial for me other than trying to get me to open my eyes so that I can heal that thing inside of me that keeps attracting the same energy. So now I'm going to keep attracting that same energy, but instead of me only wanting that one person, I'm going to attract five other energies just like that one that is also going to make me feel and try to fill a void and get what I'm not, what I don't need, what I get, what I need that I feel like I'm lacking. Do you understand? You're creating more opportunities and experiences of lack in your life when you do not honor your truest heart's desire, when you don't stand 10 toes down in what you truly want, when you lie to yourself. Okay. I've been sitting on this message for a very long time. But I keep hearing people that I love talk about how they're going to opt for this lifestyle. Well, I know you. I know you don't want that. I know you don't want that. I know you don't want it. But you're just settling for it because you feel like you can't get anything better. You feel like you can't get what you want. I'm being realistic. Hmm. When we are operating in our God energy, our God goddess energy, and our creator energy, we never submit to earthly reality. We don't submit to that. We don't put our desires on the shelf for fear of reality. We create exactly what we want to see, and we don't put a time frame around it. We don't put a, an expiration date on that desire. We allow for that desire to stay there, to get stronger and bigger until it's no longer a desire, until it is now a knowing. I know that it's done. I know I got everything that I want. I already know that I have that man or I have that woman. I have this relationship. I am now experiencing my ideal, divine, right, romantic partnership now with my perfectly matched divine, right, masculine, divine, right, feminine. Okay. All right. So I hope that this is helpful for someone who is on the fence or who has been shifting and changing, you know, what they truly desire from a space of heartache and disappointment and consistently being let down and betrayed. If you're making a decision based on past betrayals, this message is for you. Do not settle for what is not for you. You will continue to create more heartache and wounds, okay? It's not to say don't, don't get to know other people. Yes, get to know other people. Go out on many dates, but do not commit to a lifestyle that you don't truly vibe with. 
oh, I'm thinking about doing that because it just makes more sense. It's more realistic. That is the worst way to make a, a decision about something. That's the worst reason for you to settle on something. Don't do that to yourself unless you truly are about that life. And there are people who are truly about that life. And listen, that's for you. Do it. Please do. For me, I used to I, I used to choose that life because I was choosing it out of fear, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. I had codependency issues. So I was choosing and selecting that lifestyle because it was detached. If I don't get too close, if I already know that this person is dating a lot of people and I know I got other options over here, then I don't have to worry about getting hurt. I don't have to worry about being distracted. But it's not until I made myself the love of my life, when I made myself my own priority, when I fell in love fully with me, okay? When I said, you know what? I know exactly what I want and what I deserve and what feels good, what resonates with my core desire. When my infinite intelligence said, what do you want? What do you really, really want? And she wouldn't let me settle, even when I, even when my human mind was like, well, I know that this could happen. So I'm going to just, I'm going to, no, 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 baby. What do you want for real? What you really want? Be honest with yourself. What feels good when you, when you say what it is that you desire, you need to feel good about it. You need to feel like it's already there. You need to be smiling and laughing and giddy and turned on and excited about it. That is how you create a reality. But when you're trying to do it from a place of logic and you're trying to do it from what dating statistics are saying and what this dating expert is saying and what the books are saying and what they're saying about this and what science says and what all of the statistics are saying. When you're trying to base your personal joy on those types of statistics, baby, you're going to fall flat each and every time. It's not going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be booking sessions with me <laughs> two years down the road because you keep making the same choices over and over again. And I finally realized that it is, it's something within me that I need to change in order for me to attract it because I see that this person has what they want. This person has what they want. It's there. It's real. It's attainable. But I keep attracting the opposite of what I really want. And I was trying to fit myself into this world that just isn't for me, right? Okay. So I hope that this has been helpful. I'm going to sign off now. I have a ton of classes that can help with you tapping and tuning into your truest core desire and help you manifest what it is that you want and help you get into that healing that needs to happen. Okay. I have the love of my life class, the divine self-love class. I have that. Um, going on, what else would be pretty good for this? Um, the Be Magic, Make the Impossible Happen, um, eight-week course would be really good for this. In fact, I'm getting ready to put this one on sale, probably in the next week or so. I'm getting ready to put it on sale, so I'll be posting about that soon. But just go to bemagicschool.org. I'll be sure to put the, put the link in the comments of this video and check out some of those classes. And obviously, if you want to do one-on-one -on -one work with me, let's set up a free consultation appointment first to discuss whatever your needs are. And we can talk about whether or not hypnosis, hypnotherapy is a good fit for you. And we can go from there and you can start booking your first sessions with me. Okay. I love you guys. I thank you for your time and your attention to tonight. And um, I'll see you in the next video. All right. Peace out.